Hello and welcome to another video of Eternal Gains. Today I'm going to talk to you about something which almost sounds too good to be true, but it is true and uh, it's time sensitive, so you know, don't hesitate. For the future, subscribe, hit the bell so you get this infos always straight away because many of this infos is really time sensitive, so you need to be fast. But as of yet, this strategy works and I would like to share it with you. So you can try it for yourself. Now, what we're going to do today, we are going to do the reverse depth strategy. What does this mean? It means you get actually paid to borrow money. It's absurd, I know, but it's true and it can be done. Everything will happen on the Phantom Network, which is another chain uh, like AVAX or, you know, Polygon. And Phantom, by the way, Seems to be a very, very hot topic right now. So I um, strongly recommend, of course, not financial advice, but I recommend to put at least some funds into Phantom because um, in the next few weeks and even months, I see a great potential uh, on, this, on this chain. The ecosystem is growing and every day uh, new projects popping up on the, on the network. And it's a really lively ecosystem. So come and check it out. Um, I want to start, of course, uh, on how to get funds into Phantom, because that's always the first step you need to do. Now, there's a few ways how you can do it. Number one is you buy Phantom on a on a decent, on a centralized exchange like Binance or or KuCoin or whatever you have, and then you simply transfer out your Phantom from Binance onto your wallet address, right? Um, I did it that, that way and it worked fairly good. The only issue is that, especially Binance, uh, they always have issues with, with the networks, with the different networks. So if you want to send funds from your Binance account directly onto your Phantom wallet or your Avalanche wallet, um, sometimes uh, the, the network connection between Binance and those chains is, is off. So sometimes it can take a while until you get your funds. So a faster way to do it, if you have, for example, some funds in uh, Binance Smart Chain or any of this chains, what, what you can see here, which are a lot, I guess you should have funds in at least one of those. Then you come over here to AnySwap. Now AnySwap is a router or a bridge, right? Which means you can uh, bridge your assets from one chain to the other. This is similar to the method what I showed you in my other video. If you didn't see it, I will link it up on the screen where I showed you how to get funds into Kronos into the Kronos uh, chain, into the Kronos network. This time you want to get funds into the Phantom network. So what you can do if you have, for example, uh, some funds on the Binance uh, Smart Chain, on the BSC network, then you can simply come over here, connect your wallet. You see I have 0 0.208 BNB right here because I already did all of that. So as before, I just walk you through and show you how it's done. Now, what you do is you choose the source uh, chain, right? In this case, in this case, BSC, and then the target chain right here. So, as the target chain, we want Phantom FTM mainnet, right? So now you have USDC from BSC mainnet to FTM mainnet, and it's the same story like before. You can use different assets. Here you see all the supported assets on the Phantom chain and all the supported assets on the uh, Binance Smart chain, right? But I recommend in this case to take something like a stablecoin, USDC, or um, DAI, or something like that, or even MIM, um, because then the conversion is pretty simple. And also, uh, you can be relatively sure that, that the bridging process works uh, smooth, right? Okay, first step, you take whatever chain you want to start from, you connect your wallet, you add the, uh, the network onto your onto your MetaMask, as I showed you last time with Kronos, it's the exact same example with all the other chains. You see, now I'm here on BNB Smart Chain. You just Google for it, and you will find on the Binance um, website the um, RPC data you need to to integrate it. Okay. After you have bridged your assets over to the Phantom network. You come over here, we change the network to Phantom, and you will see 
that also again here switches over to, to the phantom network. So the network detected that we are on the phantom network now. Next step, what we're going to need to get this um, strategy working is this website here. I will put the link in the description, of course, so you can follow along. This is a website where you can borrow and supply assets. And as you can see here, I did this already. I did a small amount to test it out, and it definitely works. And the beauty of it is the following. As you can see, if you would like to supply Phantom in this case, you get paid 1.72%. Now, on this side is the borrowing tab, right? So if you would to borrow Phantom, you get also paid plus 0.7%, meaning you get paid to borrow the asset on this website. And I will walk you through the process in a minute. I just want to note one thing, which is even makes the whole thing even more worth. You come over here to Abracadabra. I also featured this website already in my last video, but this time, as you can see, we are on the Phantom Network, not on the Avalanche Network. So Abracadabra is also, also multi-chain. And you could come over here to, uh, to the Boros tab. And um, VFTM is simply wrapped FTM. So you can come over here to Spooky Swap, which is like the one of the biggest uh, exchanges, DEXs on, on Phantom. And you would just come over here to, to your whatever asset you, you bridged over, right? If you, for example, bridged over the USDC, you come here and um, you take USDC. You take USDC and you just swap it to FTM, right? Or if you want to go for this strategy, what I'm showing you with Abracadabra, then you would bridge it over to wrapped FTM, VFTM. Wrapped FTM is just, it is like FTM. It's a wrapped version of it, which means it's packed one-on-one -on -one to FTM. It has the exact value. It's exchanged one-to-one. -one. But sometimes uh, some websites require you to have the wrapped version of the coin. Okay, so let's say you bridged over your you use the C, you come over here to Spooky Swap, right? You change your, you swap your USDC for VFTM, then you come over here to Abracadabra, and you put in your VFTM, the max amount, what you have, and you borrow MIM against it, right? Now, to borrow the MIM, you would pay, in this case, you would take this, you see this is two pools actually, so you always have to check the interest rate first, so you want the lower one, of course. Um, so you pay 1.8% to borrow MIM, then you take your MIM, you come over here, right? You supply your MIM here as collateral, you get paid 34% for that, right? And then you borrow FRUX, FRUX against it, and FRUX gives you another 10%. So this is absolutely insane. Basically, what it would come down to is you would get 34% here, right? Plus 10% here, minus the 1.8% for the for the borrowing of the MIM. So you would have an API of 42.2%. And then you can even use this frax, what you had over here, what you what you borrowed for plus 10%. You come back over here to, to uh, spooky swap. You take frax. You swap the entire amount of frex again to MIM. And then you bring your MIM again over here and deposit it again. So we have another round trip strategy right there. Now, again, as I said in the last video already, be sure not to get go too crazy on it because there's always the risk of liquidation. For example, if you, if you look here, supply is fine. I mean, you can supply as much as you want. There's pretty much no risk associated, associated with that. You just have to come to from time to time and check for the API because these numbers can change very quick, quickly. So it can also happen that today it's plus 10 and tomorrow it's minus something. So always, this is a strategy you really have to monitor and you have to regularly come over here and check if the, if the API is still positive or not. And if it happened that it uh, turns negative, then you simply pay back your... Um, you pay back your your loan and and that's it right but in this case you get paid to earn you get paid to borrow and you can use your borrowed money 
to do the round trip again and again and again. But again, as I said before, be careful, don't overdo it, always be responsible, you know, use your mind, use your head. Uh, don't be stupid, just um, play it safe, play it safe. Because uh, the ultimate gain, the ultimate goal of this channel, as the name says, eternal gains, we want to multiply our gains and not gamble it away. Um, yeah. So, the process works as follows. When you have come over here and you swapped your your um, your bridged assets, right? You came over here, you deposited, you got your MIM, then you come over here and you would just click on on the on the asset you want to deposit, and you put in the amount supply, as you can see here. And first, you have to approve it. Whenever you use a new website and you never used it before to spend a certain uh, currency, you always have to approve it first and then you have to, then you can only do the swap. So for Phantom, I did already, you see now it's saying supply. So I could say, for example, 50%, this is 50% of my total FTM what I have in this wallet right now. It's a demo wallet, so that you guys see how it's done. Now you see here the supply rates, one time you get paid by by FTM, the, the, the base um, API, and then you also get a distribution API from this um, Ola Finance, right? And this is this is what makes them so high at the end. Now, again, this one is very important here, your borrow limit, right? So it tells me, okay, I can maximum borrow up to $58.83, and I borrowed so far 47.5, right? If I go back to zero, it's back here. So it's increasing from 47.5 to 58.83. And my limit um, decreases from 75 to 60. So as lower this number, as more risk you're taking on, right? So as higher the number, as higher the ratio between your borrowed assets and your supplied assets. So always keep this number relatively high. As I said last time, I would not go over 40% for sure. Uh, under 40%, sorry. Always keep this over 40%, ideally over 50. Then you're more or less on the, on the safe side, I would say. Okay, and then when you have deposited, supplied your coins, you come over here. And now you see the borrowing rate would be minus 6%, which makes sense. You pay to borrow. But because of this distribution API, which is higher than the borrowing um, API, the total is actually positive. And that's the, that's the beauty about this whole play right there. The only risk involved, I would say, is if the price of FTM, right, the first asset you used, is dropping dramatically, the one you, you used to, um, to secure your loan. Because if you start from here, then uh, you are depending on the FTM price. If you start from here and you use only MIM, meaning you take your original USDC, you swap it for MIM, right? You supply MIM, and then you borrow something with a with a high API against it, for example, Frax. Then you come over here again, you take, you convert your Frax to MIM again, you supply more MIM, and you borrow more Frax. That's the whole that's the whole play. And uh, in general, of course, stable coins are more safe to use because obviously the volatility is relatively low. So the, um, the chance of getting liquidated is, is pretty, pretty small. Okay, guys, if you have any more questions on this strategy, let me know. I hope uh, this video helped you and see you in the next one.